assalamu alaikum everyone i am muhammad nawid khan and today i am going to present the most important theories of language learning in this video today we are going to present connectionism theory and cognitive theory so let's start from the connection theory so this is a connection theory which was given by thorndike in fact thorndike gave this theory after an experiment on animals like a dog and a fish he caught a cat and uh, put it into a puzzle box in a box he also hanged a fish with a rope and that rope was attached to the gate of puzzle box in fact he was trying to experience that how the cat will come out how it tries to open the door so in his experience he saw that a cat tried a long time to open the door but it was failed to do so and when after some time it pushed the fish which was attached to the door by a rope then the door suddenly opened and cat came out thorndike again caught a fish and put it into the box and then he saw that the cat came out in once because cat was experienced by the first time and then it connected its last time tries to the previous experiences and came out as you have learned that the cat was connecting its experiences its information to its previous informations that's why thorndike gave his theory the name of connection theory this theory is also known as trial and error theory because as you have seen that the cat was making a lot of trials lot of tries and it was also making some errors because of which it was not able to come out that's why thorndike also gave it the name of trial and error theory connectionism is a too broad concept and it refers the meaning of next to impossible in fact this theory is not only limited to the cat or the animals basically thorndike was a animal theorist that's why he experienced over an animal but in real he gave this theory for the human beings it is obvious that if a man if we ourselves do anything for the first time we try that to do and we make errors in that task in that thing but if once we complete that task and for the second time we do not make those mistakes in that task which we have done already ability of human mind to make intellectual connections in fact the connectionism refers to the ability of human mind to take intellectual connections between the different areas of knowledge operation of inherited or acquired bonds of stimuli and response connectionism is a theory that all mental processes can be described as the operation of inherited or acquired bonds of stimuli and responses it means there should be a stimulant and response as in the experiment of thorndike the opening of gate the opening of door of puzzle box was a stimulus was a stimulant and to come out was the response of that stimulant connections become strengthened and weakened by the nature of frequency it means that the correction con- connections become powerful strengthens but according to the nature of frequency for example if a pupil is learning the rules of language and if he learns the first language rule 
and if he learns if he understand the rule easily then he would like to forward then he would like to learn the next rule of the language if he is failed in learning in understanding the first rule he would not want to learn the, any other rule it mean learning a first rule connects and affects the learning of other rules of that language it also may mean that the number of successions if the man succeeds again and again in learning the rule he will likely to learn and learn more and more and if he fails again and again in learning that rule he would not like to come forward his connections will be weakened certain response may come to dominate other due to rewards here in fact the learning theory of thorndike represents the original stimulus response framework of behavioral psychology in this theory the learning is the result of associations forming between stimulus and response so if the response of any stimulus is perfect and powerful then that action will be likely repeated more than those actions which have not brought good response thorndike's view of learning in fact whole of the theory is a work of thorndike but here the thorndike views that all learning should consist of connections or associations mean to see that each of our previous tasks which we have done should provide a beneficial data for the next work which we are going to do according to the view of thorndike he says that the action which we have done the mistakes of the actions which we have done should help us to do a new task and we shouldn't make more errors in the same task which we are going to do repeated activities decrease the time taken for the action it's a very easy concept that the action which once we have done wouldn't take as much time to do again as much time it has taken for the first time so the activities which we will do will cost our lowest time to do laws of connectionism theory so there are some laws which thorndike gave to present his theory on the basis of which he presented his theory so first law of connectionism theory is the law of readiness in this law he said that a pupil that a student must be satisfied before he or she is ready to capable of learning it means to say that a child should be mentally psychologically and socially ready to learn a language to acquire a language if a pupil have a psychological problem if he is facing some problems at his home or any other social problems so he will not be able to learn accurately so a child should be ready to learn the second law of connectionism theory is the law of practice 
connections are strengthened with practice and weakened when practice is discontinued. Mean to say, till when a child carry on practicing, his experience, his learning well, his learning language will continue to increase. The level of his learning of language will continue to increase. And if he leave the learning, then he would have to face some problems because there will be a gap between the practice time and a child would start to forget the connections which he should make in both of his trials. So as the video is going to be lengthy, so I think so that I should speak a little bit fast. So the third law of connectionism theory is the law of effect. Here is pleasant behavior likely to be repeated and unpleasant behavior likely to be stopped. Mean to say, if the response of any stimulant is good, then that action will be repeated and wantly repeated and if that response is not good so a child would likely to be stopped so here is a second theory which is a cognitive theory it was given by Noam Chomsky in 1960 cognition is the act of recognizing or of knowledge having knowledge Thus, the cognitive development theory explores the mental process used in the formation of all internal processes such as perception, intuition, and reasoning. Although basic cognitive theory can be traced back to the 17th century philosopher René Descartes, but it has been pursued more aggressively since the middle of 20th century. The theory is based on that how a child thinks. In fact, the cognitivism is a learning theory based on how people think, not a theory that specifies precisely what is learned, what content will be easiest to learn, or what learners will select to learn at different stages of development. Learning results from internal activity. It means it is a not behavioral learning or behavioral theory which will show in a person's behavior. Because it is a cognitive theory, so it will develop the knowledge of a child and it will be shown it will be resulted in the cognition and the internal activity of a child. Here in a mind, learners process data and store that data and retrieve or remember the informations of the task about which he has worked for in the past time. This theory Cognitive theory followed mentalist approach based upon cognitive learning. It also neglects the social or behavioral aspects of language and focuses on the natural capacity of human mind to acquire a language. It rejects all other theories like mentalism, behaviorism and many others. Whereas acquisition is an inert process. In fact, every child learn his negative learn his native language innatively. So it's an inert process. Cognitive theory discuss mental grammar. Mental grammar means universal grammar. This is a grammar which is described in the languages of the whole world. 
For example, there is a past, present and future in English. And in the same way, it is in every language of the world. And every language of the world has verb noun, like in English. Then there is a language acquisition device. It is briefly said that LAD language acquisition device LAD. In fact, it's a special area in a human brain whose only function is to process language as there is a specific parts in the human brain. For example, there is a part of human brain which only recognize about colors. So, to acquire a language, to learn a language, there is also specific part in the human brain. And this part of the brain is separate from any other mental capacity which the child has. As in this diagram, you are looking at the different parts of the brain. So here is a blue part, a light blue blue part of the brain. This part only work for the recognition, for the acquisition or learning of the language. Important cognitive theorist Pinan or Towell and Hawkins belong to processing approaches. These approaches investigate how second language learners process linguistic information and how their ability to process the second language develops over time. They are focused primarily on the computational dimension of language learning. Okay, goodbye. If you like this video, so please subscribe my channel.